Hello everyone und willkommen and thank you very much for your interest in ancestral and derived events during chelicerate visual system development. My name is Marcus Friedrich. I'm a professor in the Department of Biological Science at Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan. And if I would have time to show you through my lab, you would not find a single spider. This is because I actually work with beetles. However, I work on the visual system of beetles and its development, and for that reason, took a lot of interest in the process and progress and outcomes of what people found in the developing system, visual system of spiders, of course. Now, if you are really coming from a very, very outside perspective, you may first want to have an answer of why spiders and things that look like spiders are called chelicerates. Now, that has something to do with a first part or pair of mouth part appendages. And this new pet of mine, actually it's sitting on my desk, which is the bold jumper, which is a local jumping spider species. And we have to have the bold jumper take a bold jump to show us just the basis of the chelicery, AKA its first pair of appendages, which are kind of like fang type of appendages to inject poison into the prey. Now, I know that some of you are afraid of spiders, arachnophobes. That's why I asked the bull chumper to cover its chelicery with the pedipalps, which are the second pair of appendages. Anyways, so much about why spiders, together with many, many other species, are called chelicerates. All right, so of course, the review is about the visual system, and that's kind of easier to see and not as scary. And it turns out it's a very, very unique organization, very different from us. In addition to one pair of frontal eyes, which coincidentally are called the primary eyes among spider specialists, there's lateral eyes. And they come in three flavors, the first lateral eyes, the second, and the third. So if our bold jumper would reach an age of, let's say, two years, which I just learned they can actually become, it may ask at some point for glasses, a pair of glasses, right? It would look like this in the bolt jumper. Just to give you an idea of how different spider visual systems look from that of other or most animal species. Anyways, when it comes to deciphering what is called ancestral versus derived events during development, aka understanding the evolution of the event developmental processes in different animal species that is complex because in a way I think you can state that this is a thing that is requiring to think in five dimensions and the three first dimensions of course are the spatial ones xyz which are easy to see for instance if a web is formed or built by a spider right now the third dimension here aka the depth dimension you would only be able to see this if you blow against the web to give it a little bit of depth however that gives me the keyword to first point out to you that in the entire review basically i re i present the story of visual develop visual system development in a very 2d kind of way cartoonish and that doesn't do justice to the complexity and the three-dimensional complexity of that and the tissue movements that's, that, that, that have been explored by the experts in the field and really deserve a lot of respect and actually appreciation. So I strongly encourage you to look up those original data. Well, but all of this now took time again, and it takes time, aka real time, for an embryo to develop, for an organ system to develop, right? So this is our fourth dimension, complicated enough. And when we start to look at how these things compare between different species, we encounter something which is called deep time, aka the time um, by which species such as this hungry spider and its preferred prey, aka insects, are separated from each other, which, believe it or not, is most likely up to 600 million years ago.
That's when the last common ancestor of today's chelicerates and insects existed. And so that, of course, explains of why maybe some of these organs, organ systems look very, very different and why it may not be easy to answer whether this type of arrangement of external visual system elements, aka the eyes, is in any way related to what we see in insects, aka one pair of lateral eyes and then another arrangement a very different arrangement of median eyes actually it's called ocelli and here we have three and so this is what changed through work that has been published in the spider field this year and to approach this we need to now turn to what is called the level of the gene and we need to look at one gene family which is called the pac6 gene family and so the pac6 gene family codes for transcription factors and is deep time conserved, aka even precedes the origin of arthropods, we find PAC6 genes even in our own lineage, and by that I mean the vertebrate lineage, and here we're looking at a small stretch of the mouse PAC6 gene, right? And so vertebrates have one PAC6 gene, however, if we look at insects, aka the fly, for instance, there's two of them. We have one which is called eyeless, and if we reduce eyeless, these, the, the consequence is that flies actually can't put, develop their lateral eyes, the compound eyes normally. And then the second one is called not really toy, that's an abbreviation for twin of eyeless. And if twin of eyeless is reduced, in addition to eyeless, we actually have flies which have no eyes at all, not even the median eyes, okay? You can also see that every dot basically indicates identical amino acid as the PAC6 gene in the mouse, which means we're looking at a very, very deeply conserved sequence region of the fly PAC6 genes, aka toy and eyeless. Now it turns out not only flies have two PAC6 genes, that's actually true for any orthopod, and it's now clear, including spiders. So um, the two first species are spider species, and we can even tell the toy genes apart from the iris genes, because in this specific amino acid region here, there's one position where all toy genes in orthopods have a lysine, as opposed to the arginine, which is still conserved in the eyeless homologs and what makes them more similar to the PAC6 genes in vertebrates. Anyway, so why do insects and chelicerates have two PAC6 genes or homologs compared to vertebrates? Well, there is an event called gene duplication, and that must have happened before the divergence of the last common ancestor 600 million years ago of arthropods. Okay? Anyways, so in insects, in my beetles, aka flower beetles, and in fruit flies, it's been found that during a very early stage of development, when the embryo actually still is more like two-dimensional as opposed to three-dimensional, these two PAC6 genes, iris and twin of iris, are expressed in an anterior, very defined region, actually like a segmental region, and it's a region which includes precursor tissue that will be giving rise to the entire visual system, aka the compound eyes and the ocelli. And well, coincidentally, that anterior head segment of the embryo has therefore been called the ocular segment, even though it also gives rise to other parts of the head, right? And it's defined basically, among other things, by the expression of PAC6 genes. Now, the big question mark that the chelicerate field or spider field has been working on for the past 10 years was whether the PAC6 gene transcription factors are also required for making the visual system in the spiders. And so there are two studies which looked at the same time, 2015, at the same question, but in two species of spiders, the house spider and the wandering spider, coming more or less to the same conclusion that in addition or besides many other genes they looked at, what they found for the PAC6 genes, aka iris and twin of iris, which they actually for the first time identified and described, 
they felt like the areas that they studied in the early embryonic head were not consistent with a function of these PAC6 genes in tissues that give rise to the visual system. However, they looked at kind of much, much later stages than I'm showing you here, way more three-dimensional stages. But still, more recently, just this year, another study came out and looked at a little, little earlier stage of embryonic development, still coming to the same conclusion. Apparently, PAC6 genes do not seem to contribute tissues that end up in the visual system of spiders. And all of that basically now changed dramatically through this wonderful hallmark paper using a novel approach, basically a single cell transcriptome sequencing by the McCregor lab. An atlas of spider development at single cell resolution provides new insights into arthropod embryogenesis. And so it's a yes for new insights. And actually one can say many insights, so many that they don't even mention the ocular segment, even though they describe in the beautiful paper the expression of both eyeless and twin of eyeless in stage seven embryos, which are spider embryos, which again are more like what they call spider um, germ bands, aka a very two dimensional flat stage of early embryonic development where the two genes, the two Paxic genes, are expressed in a stripe kind of type domain, most likely posterior to another transcription factor, although that there may also be overlapping expression. So this is a, again, more subtle aspect of the study. However, it's pretty clear that we do have an ocular segment in spiders, that this ocular segment is also transitioning through expression of eyeless and twin of eyeless and that this segment has precursor tissue that will give rise to important parts of the interior brain and also the entire visual system. And by that, I mean the peripheral visual system that we looked at already, the primary eyes and the secondary eyes corresponding to that of the ocelli and the lateral compound eye in insects. And in addition to that, also the brain compartments, AKA the optic neuropeels, okay? So as an upshot, basically, we can now, I think, be really confident, although we, don't, we still don't have functional evidence in spiders, that there is an ocular segment and that this one is required for producing the precursor tissues for the spider visual system. And that from that perspective, we can actually also conclude that what are, we look at the median eyes in spiders corresponds to the median eyes, the ocelli and insects. Same is true for these secondary eyes, which look very different, of course, from the compound eyes and in insects, but the commonality is that that they're lateral, right? Um, and so maybe it will be easier for here to use a common language and talk about lateral eyes versus median eyes in both arthropod systems, which will make it easier for lizard people to think about insect eyes, as well as for insect people like me to think about lizard eyes. Anyways, there's much more to be covered. However, real time passed and it meant bolt jumper aged a little bit. It did need a new pair of glasses, AKA the first pair of glasses. And guess what? The median eyes got a different prescription from the lateral eyes. So for us, that's easy to describe right now. Anyways, I'm sure there's gonna be many, many questions also on topics that is not covered here in the video. So if there is questions, comments, and so forth and so forth, I'll be more than happy to entertain those by email. Thank you very much for your time, attention, and interest. And I also hope you will have the time to explore the primary and the original papers for their beauty and complexity.